<laughs> Michelangelo at work. <laughs> It's looking good. That's what happened when people call me an expert. <laughs> it goes to the head. When I was little, my mom used to read us this picture book of Chinese proverbs. There was one proverb that I still remember, and it said, when faced with two paths, always choose the most difficult. And well, we're doing that. So, after getting the epoxy and almost saying, let's glue the second layer down today, um, I looked at it again and <laughs> I decided to do an extra uh, preparation step. The decks, the seemingly endless saga. You guys know, you've been with us for the whole journey. To me, the decks feel pretty much done at this point. The deck beams have been replaced, the first layer of deck has been glued down, and the second layer of deck has been made, it's just waiting to be glued down. So slap some glue on and call it a day, right? Well, no, this is Aladino we're talking about. So we had very roughly stripped away uh, the second layer um, of the original one here. It did not come away nicely and evenly everywhere, but I thought we would just fill, fill it all up with epoxy. And now granted, we are still going to do that, but also there were unevenness in both uh, directions. Uh, some places were a little too high and some too low. The low ones we don't care about because those do get filled in, but the high spots, those would have uh, not allowed to um, have our second layer sit flush. Maya started that task with the quarter sheet sander because quarter sheet sander is usually what produces the flattest results, but it took forever compared to uh, the orbital sander, now granted, uh, Festool, they do produce um, some of the finest stuff, but price quality wise, this Bosch 6-inch uh, orbital uh, sander is pretty awesome. And so Aladino sanded and sanded and sanded. But at the end, it did seem to be worth it. The decks were really rough before, and now they look a lot better. But there's still one last thing. Here, Aladino is applying a thin layer of fiberglass over the scuppers. This is a tip we got from Larry at Cape George Marine Works, and it should help us when we construct our bulwarks later on down the road. Don't worry, they'll get reopened, but that's still a story for another day. And just like that, another episode comes to an end. No, just kidding. But a day comes to an end, so I spent the whole day preparing the decks. We're ready now, yeah. Super exciting, and I'm super happy how this turned out. Um, I was really getting a bit tired um, that I was almost going to let this one pass of just getting the second layer on. Yeah, no, um, this will be much, much better. And I think tomorrow we might apply decks unless we get distracted. All right, everybody. See you ah, in a few seconds, I guess. Good morning. Good morning. Is it time to finally close these decks? Yes. <laughs> There's just a little bit of prep work oh, before. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just the reality of boat work. Oh man, all right. What's still left to do? Uh, I glassed over the scuppers yesterday, yeah. and that is just not to have excess resin flow out. 
kind of clog those apertures and have epoxy run down the hull. And instead, a real clever um, trick uh, that I learned from Larry, who does these uh, refits generally, is just put on a little tab of glass. Larry is the fiberglass specialist at Cape George. and Fiberglass he's... guru. Okay. <laughs> he's <laughs> refit a lot of these boats um, and has done this bulwark job many times, so he knows what he's talking about. Exactly. So this is also a step that will help when we put on the bulwarks, um, because those get smushed against the hull, uh, against this portion of the hull from the inside with a lot of putty. So having this glass in place helps with this step as well. But the preparation involved now is that whenever you glass things, even when you use peel ply, you still have to do a little bit of prep work. Oh, I see. Yeah. Not bad, but a little bit. Well, these decks look so much better, Aladino. Yeah, don't they? So much more satisfying. And now that it is satisfying, we are closing them up. Shall we leave them like this for a week? <laughs> <laughs> so we can look at them. Oh, sure, man. closed. It will be satisfying too. All right, now we're ready and let's start here at the bow and then we work our way aft. All right. So you could start by mixing epoxy with slow hardener, please. All right. Uh, we'll take our time here and it doesn't have to cure um, quickly. All right. All right, Dini, it's almost go time. Time to hand me the camera and you take this from me. Time keeps on slipping like sand through my hands I honestly can't believe I'm as old as I am The moon keeps on pulling the tide of this water But who would have thought that a blue-eyed daughter Blue-eyed daughter Can you see how nicely the liquid one is absorbing into the okume? Yeah, totally. Right here. That's yeah. That's exactly what we want. It's what really gives you excellent adhesion where if you try to rip them apart, you will actually rip apart the wood because it's weaker than, than the epoxy bond. Yeah. Uh, especially if some soaked into the wood. Beautiful miracle the story goes on It's a beautiful miracle Between the sea and the sun And the sun It's always slightly terrifying to be working with such big uh, quantities of epoxy, isn't it? Yes. So it is a true blessing to have the slow hardener for this task. And it's not very hot today. Exactly, yeah. But still, like, I can't help it. Like I always, my heart rate always rises. <laughs> I try to hurry, you know what I mean? Totally, totally. Yeah. We were working as quickly as possible. It would be disastrous if the epoxy started to cure before we were ready to press down the layer of plywood. How to pick up a piece of plywood with wet epoxy. Oh, careful, babe. Oh, wow. It's an arrow, it goes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was working perfectly. <laughs> oh. 
The second layer of plywood is cut so that none of the joints overlap the joints on the first layer, just for added strength and stability. Fabulous. I really like how epoxy is squeezing out everywhere on the perimeter. It's a really good sign. That means that you've got lots in there? Yeah, well not lots, it's even mm -hmm. as well. It really pays off uh, that we yeah, did so many prep work here, uh, like even marking where the beams are because now I, I know where I can put in the long screws and instead when I see places where I still need to press it down a bit then I just use the 3 quarter inch ones, so all those steps pay off. They paid off indeed. As Aladino screwed down the last piece of decking, I couldn't help but feel that a huge chapter in this boat story was now, for real this time, closed. After months of work, removing rotten deck beams and building new ones from scratch, it is finally over, I think. We could now look ahead to different projects, like rebuilding the bulwarks and getting the cockpit finished, and applying even more primer and paint to the interior. But the story of the decks is now pretty much done. For real this time. So, Dini, Hey. We're done! Awesome. Super yeah. nice. How my friend says, awesome, nice. Luca, hello Luca. <laughs> Some of you guys might know Luca. He's been sailing with us a few times. Yeah. Super nice guy. But yes, his his signature phrase is awesome, nice. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> this really is. This is. Ah, oh, so cool. It took so long. Oh. It really did. I mean, it probably took like four hours, which isn't that long in the scheme of oh. things. But it was just. Oh, I mean, like the past months oh the whole up thing to it. yeah yeah, yeah. Not, not just doing it no doing it it was the prep work yeah um, but as i said it pays off to countersink to mark to drill to pre-epoxy pre-coat all those things yeah yay so yeah thanks to you guys to uh, make it possible for us we love sharing the process with you and that's what you guys like um which keep which keeps us doing what we like yeah so big thank you to our audience Absolutely. Ooh. Big part of the channel, all of you. So, time for some celebratory music before we move on to the next project. Welcome back to the Boatyard Sessions, where I play some tunes while some boat work gets done. This week I'm playing Coffee, which is, I believe, a traditional American tune, and I'll try and figure out who wrote it. Um, but here we go. Thank you. 
so I am putting um, Biax cloth on both sides of the bulkhead that we're going to install. This goes in the cockpit. Exactly. And I am strengthening it a bit by adding glass to it, um, which will waterproof it, um, abrasion resistance. It's a fantastic piece. I like how it looks. It's a very nice, a very nice uh, shaped bulkhead. The key here is to use as little resin as possible. Excess resin when fiberglassing only adds extra weight, not extra strength. Techniques like vacuum bagging help to reduce the amount of resin used, but we were keeping things simple. And once the fiberglass was mostly saturated, Aladino then applied peel ply. I could give a little explanation to those who don't know what peel ply is. So generally when epoxy cures, then amines rise to the surface. This high performance epoxy that we're using now from Total Boat is a 2 to 1 ratio and it's a low blush epoxy. So that is really awesome um, to actually be starting to move away from um, blushing epoxies. But nonetheless, there is some still. So by putting peel ply on it, the peel ply becomes the final surface. So you don't have to go back and do prep work. Peel ply means that you don't have to clean up the amine blush and you don't have to sand the epoxy once it's dry. Finally, everybody, Sealing Magic Carpet has used peel ply. <laughs> no. We've used it here and there, yeah, but. totally. We do, rarely. People always get, <laughs> not upset, but yeah. almost. <laughs> I don't use it often because the next day it is garbage. It really depends on the purpose. Here I'm using by actual glass. So I don't have that mat to sacrifice to fare things smooth. And since I'm using it on a very flat surface, uh, but all the other surfaces, they always need sanding anyway. They need putty. So then I really don't bother. There's still quite a few dry spots on the peel ply. So I have to mix a little bit more because Otherwise, peel ply is no good. If there's dry spots, it has to be fully saturated as well. Michelangelo at work. <laughs> it's looking good. That's what happened when people call me an expert. <laughs> it goes to the head. <laughs> playing around there's work to be done <laughs> this looks good this looks yeah. really good totally hello Eladino hello what you working on I glassed the other side of this bulkhead yesterday so oh, nice. I'm just cutting away um, these little bits of fiberglass nice uh, just to have it a bit cleaner and so that it can actually go in place and out of place. All right. And uh, there's peel ply on it, but I'm leaving that for protection. So okay. I'm just cutting away the excess glass. Nice. Looks good. So I'll leave you here. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thanks to all our patrons for making these episodes a reality. 
You can become a patron for as little as $2 a month. It's completely up to you what you pay, and that small donation helps keep this channel going, plus gives you access to real-time updates every single week on Tuesdays. Those updates usually take the form of a small, sort of casual, conversational vlog that we share exclusively with our patrons, again, every Tuesday. An extra big thanks to these folks who really go above and beyond every single week to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced, and we will see you all in the next episode.